The brand new M1 Mac Mini is phenomenal. You don't need to hear me say this in this video. You've heard me say that in plenty of videos. However, unlike a MacBook, it does need some accessories to get working. This by itself, like right here, you're not gonna get any work done with this. So what are my favorite accessories? What are the things that I personally use to turn this M1 Mac Mini into my main computer? Let's find out. Something else, something else, something else. Uh, this. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. We got the Mac Mini. It's amazing. This is my personal Mac Mini that I do use as my main computer. This, the M1 version of this is phenomenal. So these are all of the things I'm going to show you today are all of the things that I personally use to make this as good as it is. So we'll start off with like build from the bottom up. So the desk I use is actually a version of this desk. This is a desk from Very Desk, and I believe the top is called Reclaimed Wood. I bought two of these. I bought the one obviously for the shot here, and then I bought that one, which is the bigger version. That desk actually used to be out here for these videos, um, but it was just like too big and it was kind of a hassle to get around, so I switched them out. So that's the desk, and then on top of the desk, I've been using this. I actually recommended this a few months ago in another accessory video. Hold on, we just got too much stuff on the desk now. Um, I recommended this in a previous accessory video, and I've really, really liked this. This has been one of my favorite accessories of all the accessories I've recommended. This is just a big leather mouse pad from a company called Galloway Leather. And it's just, it's not very expensive, but it just feels so high quality. And when you set your mouse and you set your keyboard and stuff on top of it, it just is very nice. I don't like having my mouse go across like a regular desktop. It just, I don't know. I feel like it ruins, I feel like it ruins the desk. I feel like it ruins the mouse. So I really like having this. It's not very expensive. You don't necessarily have to get something like a leather pad. I bought my wife just like a regular neoprene like gaming pad. They come in really, if you don't know regular mouse pads anymore, they're not just little small things. You can get like desk size mouse pads. Um, and so she uses one of those. I prefer this, however, and it's been amazing. Now, what I set on top of this when it comes to keyboard and mouse, unfortunately, no mouse or keyboard comes with the Mac Mini. I do actually use the Apple Magic Keyboard. This might be my favorite keyboard ever made. When it Okay, this might be my favorite external keyboard ever made. We've already, you've heard me go on and on, like on the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 13, how I think those are the best keyboards ever. Well, those are the best, like, integrated keyboards. If you're looking for a keyboard by itself, this is amazing. Now, people do like mechanical keyboards with their big click and the clack, and I do have some mechanical keyboards. I know lots of people like them, but in my in my opinion, using mechanical keyboards can sometimes be tiring because there's so much like, I know it sounds a lot and it's going to sound like I'm being overly dramatic, but it's just, there's just so much in typing on those. Whereas this, it's just so easy to get into a typing rhythm. It's very smooth. It's very crisp. This is my favorite keyboard. Plus there's no wires, no wires, all Bluetooth, all Bluetooth. And then for the mouse, sometimes I vary between the Apple Magic Mouse and the Logitech MX Master 3. So these are my two favorite mice ever made and they are, People generally really like the Logitech MX series, and people generally do not like Magic Mice. So, Gary, what are you doing here? These are the only two mice that I have that will let you scroll horizontally as well as vertically. So this is the regular scroll wheel, but it also has another scroll wheel here on the side that lets you go laterally. And as a video editor, or even when I edit photos, that's a big deal to me. And there's a lot more customization on here. Got the buttons here, you got a button here. This button lets you take this from like a friction to a frictionless scroll. And it's just a fantastic mouse. It is expensive, but man, it just feels so good to use. It's got like just enough heft that when you're using it and you're working on it, it you feel it, it feels substantial. If you know me, when we've talked about substantial tech before, substantial, like a little bit of heft, makes me feel like it's a little more high quality. The Magic Mouse I use more often when I'm traveling. It does have both a left and a right click. You have to enable that in the settings, but it does work really well. Um, it's lightweight, it's portable, it works fantastically with Apple products. Obviously, Magic, see the Apple right there? Uh, but it has a lot of the same gestures that you can use on the mouse that you can with like an Apple trackpad or even the Magic trackpad, like the external trackpad. This thing is also amazing. We have so much to get through today. We gotta, we gotta get going. Okay, when it comes to monitors, so I only use one monitor and I use it through the HDMI port on the Mac Mini and it's the, hold on, I had to look it up. It's 34GN850. It just rolls right off the tongue. Thanks, LG. Um, but it's a 34-inch ultra-wide monitor and I 
I only recently, in the last four or five months, switched to an ultra wide monitor, but I love it. Everything that I need on the screen can be up at once. It's so much screen real estate to have, you know, your editing program, your Twitter up, because goodness knows I gotta be on Twitter like 24 hours a day. Link in the description. You can follow me on Twitter if you like hearing my thoughts on things, but it works great. Now that version is more of a gaming monitor, but it does have the same P3 color accuracy. It's very crisp, very sharp, and if you really don't like the colors out of it, out of the box, you can always buy something like a color calibrator and calibrate the monitor so that it looks, your colors are correct. But I really like that monitor. It's been phenomenal. It's got all the ports in the back that I need. You can do either display port or HDMI. Like I said, I do use it through HDMI on the Mac mini because it has HDMI. So something as a video editor that the Mac mini doesn't have is it doesn't have an SD card slot. Now there's a couple of ways that I get around that. Now one, I do continue to use the dock that I used when I was using a MacBook as my primary computer. This is the CalDigit TS3 Plus. And I've looked at buying because there are some docks that are like perfectly sized for the Mac mini. I decided I decided against them and I'm sticking with this for a couple of reasons. One, I already had it and I didn't need to spend extra money. But two, I like that this has more capabilities on it. So on those other ones that I've seen, they've got like three USB-A, maybe a USB-C and an SD card. But you can see here, this has SD, headphone, USB-C, USB-A. It's got four USB-A on the back, the USB-C that goes into the computer. It's got another power delivery USB-C. It's got a 10 gigabit per second USB-C, which is what I transfer all of my files through. We'll talk more about that in a second. And it's got DisplayPort and it's got Ethernet. Not as important because the Mac Mini has Ethernet built into it. But I really, it is expensive, but this stuff is not necessarily budget stuff that I'm building for a budget kit. This is the stuff that I use personally. This is my favorite dock of all time. I trust this dock. I've used this dock for a long time and I will continue to recommend it for people that need serious work done. Okay, so another thing that you could possibly use, if you do want to save some money, here's the budget part of the build. This is a dongle. You could just get a regular dongle instead of buying a regular dock. This one was sent to me by Editor Keys. I did not buy this, but I have like three or four other dongles in the back over there. I'm pointing, when you see me point like this, I'm pointing to my office because my office is right over there and I have no like sense to the theatrics to say like, Oh, yeah, it's right over there when I pick it up from over there. This is, I point to my office because it's where my office is. You can get a less expensive dongle if all you need is SD card. Because you can see from here, you can get dongles that have power delivery USB-C. They've got SD card, headphone, you get HDMI and USB. -A. You get all these things. And then you have the benefit of if you do have an iPad or a MacBook, you can continue using this there. You don't only have a dock that will only work on the Mac mini. Because as much as I love the Mac mini, when you buy accessories, like my philosophy on buying accessories is buy stuff that will stick with you for longer. So the accessories will actually outlast the main device. Like I've been using this for what, like a year now? And I've had, you've seen on the channel here, I've had all sorts of computers come through here. This works with all of them. So buy good accessories and they will last you a very, very long time. The Mac mini, my Mac mini has one terabyte of storage. That's not that, but it sounds like a lot. That's not actually all that much. So to supplement that, I do have a few different drives. These are my two favorite solid state drives. These are Samsung T5 and T7. The T5 is an older drive. It is a little bit slower, but you can generally find these for a little bit cheaper. This is the Samsung T7. This is the newest drive, which is ultra fast. I use these to transfer files between computers. You see here on the channel, we do a lot of comparisons. We do a lot of work between computers. So sometimes I may be working on the MacBook Air one day. I'll need to take everything off of that and move it to another computer so I can try out the next MacBook Pro or whatever. I use these for that. Or if I have a very big video project that needs more space than what the Mac mini can have, because again, one terabyte is not that much. I will then work off of these drives. These are fast enough. And the T7 specifically, they are fast enough that you really can't tell the difference between using the internal drive or using one of these external drives. They're getting fast and Thunderbolt 3 is so fast that the data transfers, it's in Incredible. But you also might need some backup, and so I use, and this is a terrible solution, um, I use a lot of these little LC drives. Uh, this is a four terabyte drive, I have another four terabyte drive, and another four terabyte. So I have three drives that are all my backup. So I keep all of the finished videos here on the channel. And so I've got three sets of all of my videos. This is one of them, and the other ones, you know, are in the other room. But this is just a spinning drive. You can buy these for super cheap and just transfer all of your external drives on there. Something for 2021 I'm looking at is actually buying a legit like RAID or NAS server so I don't have to, I don't know. It just feels like so, 
it works or I wouldn't do it, but I do kind of wish I had a more elegant solution that I could actually edit from. Or So obviously the main task, the main reason I have this computer is for video editing. Now video editing, the most important part of that is the audio editing. You want to make sure that your audio sounds good enough that if somebody's watching your YouTube video, they're not like, what's he saying? Bad audio will cause somebody to leave your video faster than any other reason. So to monitor my audio, I do it in a couple of ways. The main way I do it is I have a set of these PreSonus, what are these? The PreSonus 3.5s. Now I've heard from the audio files that PreSonuses are for people that don't know what they're buying. I didn't know what I'm buying, but these sound incredible. I have a set of these. They sound fantastic for editing my audio files because believe me, after I've edited my voice every single day for like the last four years, I know what I sound like. This sounds pretty darn good, actually. And they're not all that expensive. So I'm a very big fan of these. Um, the other one's still on the desk over there, which was kind of a, making this video when it's all of the stuff that I actually use, I had to tear apart my whole setup in there to make this. So I hope everybody, I hope you all appreciate what we do to make these videos, because my setup, my desk is in tatters right now, and I'll have to fix that after this. So I use that. I also have been using these Sennheiser, what are these? The Sennheiser HD 300 Pro headphones. I also have my son's gaming PC and set up in the office. So when he's in there playing games, sometimes I don't want to hear Terraria all that much when I'm trying to video edit. So I've been using these when I need to have like headphones for video editing. These are fine. These were a little more expensive just because I prefer comfort and these were the most comfortable ones I could find. However, while these were the ones I was using, I very recently, like this week, transitioned and started using the AirPod Maxes. Now, this is not necessarily something I would recommend for everybody. These were $550. I still can't believe that I bought that expensive of headphones. But these are phenomenal. They sound amazing. They're super comfortable to wear. They pair instantly through Bluetooth on the Mac Mini. And I know that others have talked about delays when video editing, causing it hard to like do the edit when you're always like half a second behind. I haven't seen too much of a difference. And so the last video we did, I actually used these. And this video is being edited with me wearing these because they're exceedingly comfortable. They're very expensive. I don't know that I would necessarily recommend these for video editing. This is just, again, the stuff that I use or AirPod Pros too. And then something else I've been doing, we've been doing a lot of big Zoom meetings in my office and I've wanted to start streaming here on the channel again. So I needed a new kind of camera for that because for streaming you need different kinds of things than maybe you need for like a talking head YouTube video or other things. So I've been using the Lumix BGH1. B&H Photo is letting me borrow this right now, but I'm actually, I will be buying one of these in the next couple of weeks because this camera, even though it looks silly, it's just this little cube. Uh, this is one of the best cameras I've used this year. You can see it's got plenty of mounting points all over here. So I had to do some vertical video for work the other day. Um, I just mounted it on the side. It was amazing. It's got a whole bunch of like IO ports in the back. You can plug in microphones, power over ethernet, HDMI, you got power delivery with a plug. This thing is phenomenal. And this is actually the smallest and cheapest Netflix approved camera. If you didn't know that, now you know. But this thing is amazing. It takes two SD card slots. It actually runs through the software I'm using over here. This is called the Lumix Sync. So you notice this doesn't have a display on it, but you can USB-C it to your computer and then control everything from your computer, which is actually very fast and very efficient. It also, if you need good audio, you can use, I can't show you now because we're using it on the camera right now, but the Lumix XLR adapter goes right on top here. This is phenomenal. It's a very expensive camera. But for what it does, nothing else does this. And then I like having it attached to the table behind my monitor. And to do that, I've been using this. I forget what company this is. I think this is a newer device. And it's basically like a copy of the Elgato system. But it's just like a little, it mounts right to your desk. But it's just like a little arm. It mounts right to your desk. And then I put this little camera attachment on it. So it just screws on here. Oop, I've got it. I was actually using this as the main camera for the last couple of videos because the colors on it are phenomenal. But you can just screw this right onto here. And now whatever camera you're using with your Mac Mini as a webcam, you can just get this to work. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. All of this stuff is great, which is why I use it all. But yeah, so these are all of the accessories that I use to make the Mac Mini one of my favorite computers ever made. And it has been a joy to do all of the work here in the studio for the last few weeks off of it. But what are some of your favorite accessories? Leave me a comment below. I love learning about other accessories from people because that's where I find a lot of this stuff. Actually, the Logitech MX Master 3, I learned about this from one of your comments. So please uh, let me know about other awesome stuff that I don't know about. And if you like this video and you're curious to see how the M1 Mac Mini is holding up after it's been out on the market for a month, here's a video right here.
You can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.